And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. The Isle of Dr. Necro, and I almost feel like I should laugh maniacally after that, ha ha ha, is about going to this foul villain's island with a group of superheroes, almost like the Incredibles or James Bond. It's a cooperative game and you're trying to stop him from, well, blowing up everything. You gotta go and rescue some scientists and then get them off the island before the island explodes. Meanwhile, you're fighting all kinds of horrendous monsters. It's kind of like a mix from the island from King Kong with the uh, all different islands and just nasty stuff. It's a cooperative game. It's a difficult one, but it's a very, very small one. It comes in a small box, very similar to the Silver Line from Fantasy Flight, but this one's from AEG. So let's take a look at this game. Cooperative games. I like them. Is this one worth it? This can be played solo, but also can be played with up to five players. And each player will build a character out of three different character cards. Each character card has uh, different abilities. You can see this one is a Psychic Blaster. Uh, they have different special abilities on here. Here's an Infiltrator in combat. And you can see that the artwork is very Pulp Fiction style. The Mentalist and Skilled. And so you're going to take three of these and through a drafting method, uh, you will get three of these abilities and that will be your character for the course of the game. Depending on how many players are involved in the game will depend on how much time you have. So you, you can see here that you have a countdown clock and on this countdown clock you're going to start with a certain amount of time. Each one of your turns is going to take up one click of time. So let's say I'm playing a solo game. I would start it on 12 minutes and each time we take a turn we move it down one minute. We do not want to get down to zero 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 because unlike the movies, in this one, the clock might not necessarily stop. There's a deck of cards that you'll be using as you go through the island. These are your encounter cards. Uh, there's a missing scientist that you'll be inserting part of the way through the deck and another countdown clock. But what you're going to do each turn, each click of the clock, you have two choices. You can rest, I'll talk about that in a minute, or you can move through the island. When you move through the island, you'll decide how many cards you're going to move through. And you'll mark it up here with a speed token. Now, you have to do at least one, but you can do more than one, if, and you probably should because you have to get through the deck in a certain amount of time. You don't want to do too many, though, because you need to rest between some of these turns, and the cards are usually not good. So, for example, here you have a monster. There's a Plasma Ghost. He has a combat value of four and see that CV4 and he also has a special ability there and so whenever you come across one of these monsters you have to fight the monster each player is going to roll one die and they have to roll higher or, or equal to or higher than that monster's combat value for every roll that they roll that's higher the monster will take one hit and for every roll that they roll less then the player has to take a hit now when the player takes a hit, let's take a look at the player's uh, character sheet. And by character sheet I mean the three cards that you made up your character with. If you take a hit you can turn one of these cards over, which means you can't use that special ability any longer. You can take another hit losing that card for good, or take another hit here. And you know, you don't want to take hits because at, at some point you're going to die. Hopefully some of your players will actually hit the monster, and for each hit that the monster suffers, he takes some damage. The monster's damage is equal to the number of players on your team, or in some cases more. Once you've killed him, he's gone. Now, as you go through the deck, you'll also find traps, and you'll have to roll a die to avoid these traps. There's a cyber shark pit. Uh, then there's rooms, and there's different things that you have to do based on what's in your cards. More traps, more traps. You, you can see that this is just really not a very pleasant island. More monsters, but every once in a while, and let's hope we turn one over soon because this is turning into a very depressing run through the deck, once in a while you'll turn over an item card. Yay! Items! They help you, but you don't even get to keep the items. You have to basically stick it there and leave it there until the next monster comes along, and then you have to defeat that monster to get that item or items. Instead of turning over cards between one click, you can also rest. When you rest, you are allowed to turn one of these cards over if you've been damaged. Also, many cards require charges to work. You can use a charge to do something. And whenever you rest, you can add one charge to any card that says charge. Now again, you like to rest all the time, but resting takes up a whole turn. And so you really want to get moving. 
If the countdown clock reaches zero before you rescue the scientists and find the card that shows a shuttle to get off the island, then you lose. If you find the scientists and the escape shuttle and you the, that, that countdown clock goes to zero, nothing to do about it. But if you get off the island before that, then you win. If you find the escape shuttle and leave without the scientists, well, I guess that's pretty much a draw. There's also a card that is called a sliding door trap, which basically splits your party into two, at which point you're drawing from separate decks and you keep doing that until you get back together. And that's basically very simple. You either get off the island in time or you don't. The first thing I need to convey to you is that this game is hard, stinking hard. I, I have yet to even come close to winning. You turn over the cards and it just seems like bam, 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 bam. Now, that does not detract me from a game. My favorite cooperative games, Arkham Horror and Ghost Stories, are also very, very difficult. And yet, I don't mind because when you beat them, you feel this great sense of satisfaction. My problem with this game is, yes, it's very interesting to build your character. I like that part of the game. It's neat to build the different kinds of characters. I like the retro idea of the game. But as the game progresses, that means absolutely nothing. You go through, you, you turn over the cards, you have no choice what direction to go, what to do. You turn over a card, you fight it, you roll a die, you fight it, you roll a die. And if you roll poorly, you lose. You die. You can't roll poorly and say, well, next time we'll do better. No, you're dead. There is no recovery. I, I don't know who's really going to enjoy this game. Uh, someone who enjoys pain and suffering. Uh, and then when you do win, what do you say? Oh, look at our great skill and strategy. No, you got lucky. Yeah, there's some strategy, how you're going to fight it, when you're going to use your, your special abilities, but really, it's mostly turn a card over, let's see what happens. Turn a card over, let's see what happens. Turn a card over, let's see how we get beat up this time. Yeah, sure, the cards could be in an order that helps you out, but I just felt like I needed more choices. In games like Pandemic, I can decide where in the world I can go. Arkham Horror, where can I go? In Ghost Stories, which ghosts am I going to fight? They don't feel scripted. This game feels scripted. It's a neat idea, and it's, I, I don't, you know, again, I'm all for cooperative games. This one just doesn't cut it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.